Hey everybody, this is Jimmy and welcome back to Jimmy Does Knitting. It is 2024, I'm in a good mood, so let's get into it today. Um, it's sunny, it is sunny outside and that is wonderful. And the reason why it's sunny is because it is very cold in Amsterdam. For some reason, once it hits freezing, the sun comes out and you know what, I will take it. And I am wearing my scarf today because it is so cold. We don't really heat the upstairs, um, so that's the deal. But welcome, welcome to 2024. Uh, my name is Jimmy, if you don't know me, I'm an expat living here in Amsterdam. I am a knitter and designer and I like to knit black things and other things and it's a new year kids. It's a new year, we're starting out with new different things. So I wanted to give you a little bit of an update. I've been a little quiet because I've been sorting through some things, uh, but I needed to get ahead of you and we are at a point where we can chit chat, which is exactly what I love to do. So um, this year, this episode, my episodes are themed, so I don't really have like your standard podcast thing. We go through some things, I don't usually do acquisitions. There's one acquisition here. But uh, yeah, and this is new year, new things, new designs, new projects, new cast-ons, new, 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 and yeah, so let's get into it. Um, I am wearing my Gaka shawl. It's by Atelier Cliché. I don't know if you can see this. It's this beautiful twisted stitch pattern. Do you see that? That's phenomenal. Um, this has been my go-to this winter. This was knit with one strand of Plutolope and one strand of Drops Mohair in black. Um, I love this, but I can't say that I'm the biggest Mohair fan. I think that this really showed me that Mohair is kind of like fun to work with, but it's not necessarily my jam. I find it a bit itchy on the neck. I usually wear it with a hood, and today we're not wearing a hood. We're wearing something that I want to discuss. and. Um, I would like to re-knit this out of Plutolopi and a strand of Einbond, which is a lace weight also produced by Isatex. And I like the idea of this unspun yarn with a strand of something lace weight, just to give it a little bit of structure, a little bit of hold, less pilling, that sort of thing. Um, it was, I did one out of Montelope in that sort of the, the held double sort of thing and I, it was just all unspun wool and it was more delicate. I can be a little bit less delicate if I hold it and unspun with some lace and I think I want to try out the Einbahn. I know exactly where to get it and I am refraining from buying a bunch of stuff um, until I need something from that store and when that happens, we will get it. We will go for it. So that is what I'm wearing. Also, what I'm wearing is a new design, kids. Uh, I'm hoping that my mic isn't really getting whatever. Um, I am wearing the Troy Boy. So this is not, this is written up. This is at the tech editor. I still need to grade it, but uh, this is my new sweater design. And this is part of the reason why I've been taking so long is because I've been knitting a fingering weight sweater. So we'll go through the sweater, but um, let's start at the beginning. So it's called the Troy Boy because I'm from Troy and we have a reputation, let's say, for being a bit basic, a bit nouveau riche, a bit basic. And I was like, A, this is a perfect name for a sweater. It is a male identifying size sweater, so it has like a deeper yoke. It's, it's more like a, a men's sweater, let's say. And uh, so I wanted to use boy. I like to try to keep my name sort of gender neutral just in case like it's, if it's unisex pattern or something, then it should be unisex. But this is definitely like a marketed to men's sweater. So we call it the Troy Boy because the Troy Boy is basic and this is a basic sweater. I was really looking for something simple. I wanted like fingering weight in the round, which so so I mean, people have feelings about that. And all I could really find is like top-down raglans. There's like the So Basic and the, like there are a couple of others, but they're all raglans and they're all, they weren't doing it for me. And I like a drop shoulder because it adds a bit more structure to things. And I wanted just something simple, 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 simple. And so that's what I did. Um, 
there is there are patterns that are pieced, but I figured um, there was a gap in the market for a top down drop shoulder and fingering weight for men, so I've decided to make it. Uh, there will be two versions of this. This is the fancy version with just like a single neckline. Do you see this? I didn't fold it over. I really don't. I think I just don't like a folded over neckline. Personal preference, I think it looks beautiful, but for me, they sort of like stand up just because of my neck shaping. And I think that this lies a little bit flatter, which I tend to like a little bit better. So there's a folded over neckline, there's um, a straight neckline, and then there's a fancy version and a non-fancy version. So I knit the fancy version because I am a fancy boy, and I knit it out of Mandim by Retrosaria Rosa Pumar. This is going to be a heavy Mandim episode because I was just obsessed. I was like, I have to have this. I had some in my stash. I needed to buy more. Like I just, I needed to have it in my life. So we went a little crazy, but here we go. So um, this is Mandim. It's produced in Portugal. All the stuff on the label is Portuguese. So I don't really know exactly what um, sheep it is, but it's like non superwash Portuguese wool. People say they use this a lot for socks, I've never knit socks. I think it would probably be a good sock yarn. It's non-superwash, there's no nylon, it's 100% wool. Oh, it's made from Campancia com sheep. Um, and then it says the region of Portugal, it's made from, it's uh, 24 to 32 stitches for 10 inches, four inches, um, 10 centimeters, four inches, 30 to 48 rows. Um, Specifically, this is 24 by 35 is what my gauge ended up being with this. It's 100 grams, 385 meters, or 421 yards, and it's 100% Portuguese wool. So this is the color 119 black, of course. I, what were you expecting from me? You, I mean, you're not going to get much different. If I, You're not going to get anything different this year. I'm sorry. I will knit with other colors, but not for me. I'm still knitting black, and I wanted to do the sample the way I wanted to do it. So, wool shirt. Let's walk you through this. So this is cast on top down. So you do this um, shaping in the back. It's really simple. It's like super, super, super basic. Um, it kind of makes a, a trapezoid shape, not a flat shape, but like a trapezoid shape. So you do the back yoke down in stock and net. Then you pick up on one side of the sleeve and the other side of the sleeve, you knit down, um, you join across, knit there, and then once you get to the underarm, you cast on some stitches and knit down, and then it's sleeves from the um, pit to the, to the cuff. So it's a very straightforward, very simple drop shoulder design. This is the first time I've actually ever knit something like this and I figured it out and I was really quite proud of myself. Um, what is unique about this are the features. So it's like, how do I make this something that's both basic but also like, why would you buy this? And the answer is some of these details. So the, the cuffs and the hem are quite long. So this is a three and a half inch um, cuff, I do not know what that is in centimeters, under 10, 9, maybe it's 9. And then it has this detail right here. I don't know if you can see this. Maybe you can see it better here. Um, it has a detail on the side seam. So the idea is this is the fancy version. So it has this twisted stitch on the side that runs into the hem. And then the twisted stitches actually do go into the hem. And then up here and then you combine it and it goes on the inside of the sleeve and that's where you where you decrease. So the fancy version has the twisted stitches. The non-fancy version is just going to have this purl row and everything with these two rows goes into this two by two ribbing quite nicely. And same thing on the hem. If you can see that. So yeah, it's um it's quite simple. It's pretty easy to modify. I don't, maybe it's your first sweater. Um, I would probably recommend top down in the round, but like a second sweater, if you want to knit flat and then in the round, great. This is it. Um, so the standard version will just have the pearl on the seam that then will go into the two by two rib and it won't have any of the twisted stitches. And of course you could always leave that out. So that is, those are the features. 
the dynamic the dynamic features of the Troy Boy. I'm hoping my next podcast I can do a test knit call for this, and we can. I want to get this out by March, but that might be pushing it. Um, but it's a fingering weight sweater, so I don't feel so bad about pushing this more into spring because it's lighter. But still, you don't know. So this is the uh, yeah the Troy Boy. My new obsession, my new black sweater, and I really love it. I really think it's great, and um, I hope you do too. So keep a lookout on my Instagram and here for the test knit if you're interested. Great. Another one. We're going to go into another design and some more Mondine because that's what I did this December. So the next one... I'm calling the Dazzle Hat. So this is the prototype. This is not the exact final pattern, it's close. But this was also done in Mondeem. This was done in two colors. This was done in this navy, which is color 105, and then this speckle, which look at that. It's 212. Um, I'm usually not one for like a speckled or a variegated yarn. I really like a solid color. But for some reason, I saw these in the shop and I had to get them. So in February, March last year, I went to Portugal for work and then I went to Retrozaria Rosa Pumar and I did some yarn shopping. I didn't get much, but I did get these yarns. I wanted to make a bunch of Nordic mittens. That actually really never happened. I should do it. I have a book over here somewhere with some, some patterns in it, so I should. But I thought that these two would go together. And the answer is they're beautiful together. So you get this hat. Um, it looks a bit funny, but it's it's a one size sort of deal. The, it's a two by two, and then you you have it. So this is based off of the idea of dazzle camouflage, if you know that. Um, I will put some pictures up here and here and wherever. But the idea is they used it for like ships in the military, so you could tell that there was like a ship there. It wasn't like hiding but like it obscured like the shape and size. So it could be something like just a cutout that like, it's like, you know, you have this big warship but it's really cut out. Or it was like, you can't tell the exact features of it because the pattern was so intense. So that was the idea. I got, I made a repeating pattern. So I have this in a way that I could like make a full scarf with repeats or a sweater or something like that. I don't know if we're, going to go there quite yet. Let's see how the hat does. But I thought it was something different. I thought it was something fun. It was a good way to use some scrap yarn. I did refine it. And this is the final prototype, which I think is a little less clunky and a little bit better. This is also in Mondeem. This is color. What do we got here? Uh, sorry. So this is color... 112 is the green, and then this is their like undyed color 100 for the white. And I think that this would be a good like scrappy stash buster thing. I think that the main color uses about 75 grams ish, and then the the contrast color uses almost exactly 50 grams. So if you have something in your stash that is close to this, that way, then you could, I mean, this is a great stash buster and it's just a fun little hat. It takes maybe a couple of days and um, yeah, you go from there. So this is the, the final one. I have quite a small head. This is a one size fits all. It fits me, but it fits Mr. Does Knitting a little bit better. Um, still looking for some preview knitters for this. So if you're interested and you're watching this video, please reach out to me on Instagram. My Instagram Ravelry are below in the description. It's Jimmy Does Knitting. Pretty easy. Don't need to to think too much about it, but um, that's the deal. And look at this little, little crown. Um, I think it's quite nice. It's just this, uh, I don't know. It's a one size fits all. It's a cool little something different. Nobody's gonna know your size. You're gonna look funky. And then you can play with a bunch of colors. It can be low contrast. I'm, you know, I would like to go high contrast with this. I want to see stuff with your speckled yarn. I want to see some neons. I want to see some problem colors together. Like, it's whatever. So um, this will be launching by the end of the month. 
So if you have some yarn and you want to do a quick preview knit for this, like I said, super, super quick. It's a hat. It's easy. And um, you can go through there. So this is the Dazzle Camo Cap that I'm knitting. And then for the record, here's the prototype. So you can see it in a, a little bit of a different color scheme. Fun little mittens. Anyway, cool. So let's get into something a little bit more more serious and a little bit out of Moundim, out of um, my own designs. Oh, well, let's say. But we're still on fingering weight. So this is a fingering weight yarn. I've got one more fingering weight thing. I don't know what's come over me. I'm not a fingering weight type of, of person. Um, I It's fine. I don't really have any opinions either way about it. But I... Uh, decided to knit a bunch of fingering white stuff. So let me get a drink of coffee and then we will we will discuss this. So my in-laws are from the UK. So I'm using that now as an opportunity every time I see them to either order some yarn that I can't get or, or not. The issue with ordering yarn from the UK for me is not the price, it's the import tax charges that the Netherlands charges. So it's 21% tax, and that's what kills me. It's not the shipping, it's not the yarn price, it's the fact that I have to pay, you know. A sweater's quantity, I mean, this was about 50, 60 euros for this, but like a sweater's quantity of like a medium range yarn is gonna be over 100 euros, and then you add 21% on top of that, and it's like, these things get a little bit expensive. So I was knit-fluenced by The Woolly Worker, and she keeps on going about Kenrose Four Ply, Kenrose Four Ply. So I got some for Secret Santa from Christmas. And here it is. It's a Kenrose Four Ply. This is the color black. It's shade 11. They come in 50 gram skeins. It's 100% wool. Let's see, it's 205 meters, 224 yards per 50 grams. Um, it's a little bit thinner, but yeah, it's Wee County Yarns, 100% wool. Spun and Dyed in Scotland by Todd and Duncan. How fun. Anyway, um, it's a nice yarn. It's supposed to soften up a lot. So I thought it would be cool. And I have this one design by Brooklyn Tweed that I've been like salivating over since it came out, which is maybe a couple years ago. It's the Klum CL, no, C-U-L-M pictures over here. It is this beautiful texture. And you know me, I love a texture. I love a black sweater in texture. Like, that is my jam. It's wonderful. So I was like, we're gonna get some special yarn and we're gonna go for this sweater and it will be great. The smallest size was a 42 inch, which is like my preferred size. It's bigger than this, this one. I based it on my shoulders, not my, my body width. And so the construction of it is, it's a little bit thinner than my normal, but that's fine because it also fits. But anyway, Back to the Klum. So that was um, the Klum in Kinross 4 Ply, and I got seven skeins per the recommended amount. Remember this. But, guys, I paid $9 for this pattern and I had to modify it. Um, so there are a couple things that I wanted to discuss about this pattern that we, we need to modify. First of all, it's made for a woman's body, which is fine. It, it's great, that's how it's written. It, it, it's 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 okay um, and what that means typically or in this case in this case let's say is it is shorter so it to me if I knit it to length it would be a crop top so I have to add about five inches ish which is I don't know 12 centimeters um, so I'm gonna need more of this yarn which is fine if I have to order some extra because I can pay import tax on like you know 20 euros or something but kind of disappointing um, that I I didn't catch that. So I have to order more yarn for this. Um, I don't know, but I'm also reducing the width. So the, the width of this for my size, let's say 42 inches on 3.25 millimeter needles is like 280 stitches, let's say, something around there. And I'm like, this is not gonna happen. Um, if you saw in the pictures, it's a seed stitch now if you don't know anything about seed stitch, is it's like a one by one ribbish thing, but then it alternates. It's really pretty. But a seed stitch 
is not like this. So stockinette would be like this. Seed stitch on the same needles in the same gauge is gonna be like, poof. it just like blows up. It balloons, it's really big. So we had to make some modifications. Also, I did not like the the waistband of it. I mean, I liked the waistband, but it was like a flat hem and then it was seamed. So I wanted to make it in the round. All that to being said is we have added five inches to the base. We have knit the hem in the round. We have also changed the stitch count and the length of it. So I paid $9 for this pattern and I had to do all that. I can't say that that's like my favorite thing, but let's take a look at this. Let's actually discuss the knitting and what I've done. This is what I have so far. Now, I didn't swatch for this and I will tell you why. And the, the reason being is I didn't have a lot of yarn and also I was not gonna knit this on anything smaller than a 3.25 millimeter needle. I'm just not knitting that, but do you see this? It has this beautiful center panel with like the seed stitch around it and this really cool ribbing. I'm a big fan. So I like this pattern. I like this everything. We're basically just using this for the pattern. So the cast on was going to have me cast on a 2.75 millimeter needle, but the math that they had would give me like 30 something inches, which is not enough to actually fit around my hips. I am not a big boy, but that would not physically like fit around my hips. So I did it with the 3.25 millimeter. Now, with my gauge on this, um, it is, that would have not been a problem and I should have done that, but that's not what I did. So I did a provisional cast on so I could do a tubular, a tubular cast on for the bottom, which I love. It's my favorite thing. I always do it. And there's a broken rib, there's some lace, and then you get into the pattern. So like I said, there was some recalculation here. Uh, the cast on, I did about the same, but I did it on a bigger needle. And then I needed to separate the front and the back differently than the pattern because women have more need for room in the chest. Also, this was supposed to be oversized. So the amount of stitches on the back and the amount of stitches on the front are different. So the front, has more stitches, the back has less. Don't ask me what they were, don't even remember. I ignored them. So I split it half and half because I know that that works for me. And what I did is I knit up to about here, which was one ball of yarn, and I blocked it, which I'm so glad I did that because I didn't take a swatch. I knew that 280 stitches would not get me 42 inches. Um, circumference, I knew that that would give me like, I don't know, 47, 48, something. I knew it would be bigger. So I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's do all this. So um, I wanted to know how much I needed to increase. And the answer was nothing. We're just gonna stick with my cast on amount. It's going to be straight up and down because that always already got me the 42 inches that I wanted. So we're, this is going to be not shaped, although I do prefer a bit of shaping because it gives it a little bit of a V, but this isn't really gonna be shaped. Do you, I mean, look at this. It's such a beautiful stitch pattern. Uh-oh, I'm coming out. Um, so it's I'm not doing any shaping. I redid the amount of stitches and then I'll figure out the neck when we get there. I'll still follow the pattern, I think for the shaping but not for the, the shoulders. I'll do my own thing for the shoulders because I can't be bothered, so do whatever. Um, once I get all of these stitches on the needle, I will talk to you more intelligently. Okay, we're, we're back on the needles. Um, so that's what I did. I, I'm just gonna knit up probably 15, 16 inches, and this is not giving away the pattern because that is longer than the length of the pattern. Um, until the underarm separation and it appears as though the sleeves should be fine. We'll see when we get there. Um, and then I can do the neck shaping for a different size and the sleeves for a different size and I'll figure out the width at one point. I don't really know. We'll deal with that when we get there. Um, 
so yeah, I, I mean, I'm a bit disappointed with this pattern, if I'm going to be honest, just because I guess I didn't do my due diligence and it was designed to be different sizing than I wanted and like different shape than I wanted, which I don't know if I pay that much for a pattern, I don't want to do all this math and, and change it up. But I mean, it's beautiful and we want to make it happen. So that's what's going to happen. We'll, we'll see what happens with the yarn. I'm not really quite sure. I'm sure it will fit fine. Now, I I will say about this yarn, I don't know if you can see it. Maybe if I go really close up. So if you go really close up, oh yeah, you can see that. So this part is blocked, this part is not blocked. And you can see that the yarn really fills in and really mats up. Um, I was very concerned because this is somewhat expensive yarn and when it knits up, it's very see-through. Can you see my, my thumb? It's very see-through, like the stitches are uneven, but like it really blocks to being more dense. And I just did a quick block in the sink with just water. Um, I'm going to do like a better block with the euclid and all that stuff because I think that will soften it up. Now, everybody's like, this feels so soft afterwards. I don't know if it does or not. I'm not convinced that I will be a, a Ken Ross floor ply stan like a lot of other people. But I will say it's a pretty good yarn and once blocked, I think the fabric looks beautiful. I, it's nice to work with. I don't really have any problems with the yarn. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. It's not bad whatsoever. I mean, it really looks like it has a nice twist to it. It feels good in your hand as you make it. Um, so that's what I think about the yarn. I don't know. We will we will have further reflections um, as we go along with this. I think this project will be a little bit of a, a cranky project. It's, I always do this. Now, this is what it frustrates me. I'm always like, oh, I'm just going to buy a pattern and knit it. I'm just going to buy a pattern and knit it. I did it with the Oba, with this, um, with a couple of other things, and it never works for me. Never, ever works for me. And I, I don't know why. I don't have, like, crazy body shaping. I do have, like, a male body shape. I don't even really have a male body shape, but I'm just skinny and tall. And, like, I, the fact that I have to modify these things so much and recalculate and redo all these things, it frustrates me. But I think that's part of why knitting is so good is because we have the ability to create a custom made, custom fit garment. Um, just because the person didn't write the pattern with you in mind doesn't mean that you can make that pattern the perfect one for you. So that's something to, to go along with. And this is also why, you know, everybody's like, oh, podcasts are becoming designers. It's like, I've had to do this since the very first project is improvise and change things. So I, I don't know if it's because I'm a male knitter or different preferences or because I'm tall. I, I, don't under, I don't know what it is, but I've had to modify every garment that I make, except for like ones like this, which I actually did all the math for, so it fits me perfectly. <laughs> which I don't have to do the modifications because it's it's perfect. But, um, I mean, you just have to modify and make these alterations, and it's just part of garment knitting in general, I feel. Um, you know, sometimes you can change up the colors or whatever, but, like, often I'm adding length, I'm changing circumferences, um, yoke depth is something that I change quite frequently as same as collars. Like, it's just different. Sometimes, a lot of times, I have to recalculate the sleeve length, so that works for me, which is a whole other thing. So it's just, it's like, part of knitting for me and part of the practice. And so that's how I've learned to design and come up with things. It's because I have to. I have to. Like, I have, I'm not even, like, I'm knitting the stitches from the pattern, kind of, and like it's just something else so that's an explanation nobody needed but that's the, that's an explanation i'm giving you for you know why we're all designers and why we feel creative also i do have a background in interior design like i am a trained designer so there is a, a bit of an outlet for that but um yeah it's mostly because i have to modify stuff anyway so i'm just gonna make it up the way i want to do it and then maybe make some money i'm not making money off this stuff let's be honest I think it costs me more to put out a pattern 
then I'll never get my money off of it. Anyway, the point being, this is the Clum. Um, I think it's going to be beautiful when it's finished. At the moment, <laughs> I'm kind of like, the about it. Um, also, I've been using this as like a knit night sort of project, and I really don't think it is. I think I need to pay a little bit more attention, especially in terrible lighting. So I don't know what's going to happen with this, but we'll see. It will be done. It will be finished um, eventually, eventually. The other thing that I got for Christmas knitting wise was this Japanese stitch Bible. Can we take a moment? This is phenomenal. Like, I, I mean, do you see these things? Like, it is so beautiful and they have twisted stitches and cables and I can't show you many of these pictures because they have charts on them. But it's just really beautiful and inspirational. There's one cable pattern in here that I'm like, ooh, that is the cable pattern I've been looking for for a scarf. Um, I also have this idea of like a worsted weight lace sweater maybe with intarsia and like i think this book has some stuff in there and what i want to do is be a bit more intentional this year um like really find some process in some things like and take you along with me i think social wise we're going to document a bit more Mitch, a bit more and share it with people because i do things my own way but i also think that some of you may do it, but a lot of you probably don't. And so I think just documenting it so we can open up a conversation. But I want to be more like swatching and play and like documenting and, and taking more time with some projects. And I have some projects lined up that we will do that. And I think I will actually make some project videos of those. But um, one of those would probably just be a bunch of swatches from this and see what we get out of it. and what we don't get out of it. I have a couple projects ideas and yeah, I just, I just think we need to, I need to take some more time and make a meal out of everything because I'm very much a product knitter, but I want to be more of a process knitter, especially when it comes to the creative parts of designing or something. I, I think that I really need to get my teeth sunken into it. I also want to this year get more involved with like people in the knitting community. So working with like yarn manufacturers or dyers or um, other people like doing test knits or other designers. Um, just, I just want to chat and like have more personal connections. Right now I'm just chatting at you. There's no back and forth. And that's not really what I set out to do with this podcast. It's getting more and more, but we'll see. Anyway. And that's all to say, you'll probably be seeing some stuff from this. They have really cool ribbing. Let me see if I can find this without like doing whatever. They have um, alternate ribbings as part of this. These, do you see these? I'm gonna show you one more thing. I have some ideas for an upcoming episode, but I wanna show you a preview of something that I've been up to. And that is this. So this is um, a swatch for the Woven Warmth in Holst. I cut this off because the background color was this like brownish, which coordinates, but it's not doing what I want to do. So we'll, we'll discuss this later. There's a whole intarsia. I really love intarsia, you guys. I really love intarsia. I think we're going to do some intarsia this year. I know we're going to do some intarsia this year, and I'm obsessed, and we'll try to get more. But um, I just wanted to tease with this is a little bit of a kind of a swatch, not a swatch, um, of some intarsia, and we'll discuss this on the next podcast. Anyway, I rambled long enough. Thank you all for joining me here. Please like and subscribe if you want to do anything. Um, Comment below if you have anything that you would like to say that is positive and nice. Um, look out for the Troy Boy test. If you want to do the Dazzle test, please um, DM me on Instagram. I would love to have you join. And other than that, Happy New Year. Be good to yourself. Be good to others. And I'm going to enjoy the sunshine today. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.